Welcome to our special edition of uh, Three Men in a Blog. Uh, under the title, what as we call this, Leith Noise Ups. Don't we call them for mm -hmm. better? That'll do. That'll do. Uh, it's all, it's the usual suspects. All of us in slightly different ways. And Mr. Grant has decided to grow a beard. <laughs> well, <laughs> I don't know. Uh, the two of us are... It's an exaggeration. <laughs> the two of us have got the lurgy. One kind of a, one kind of another. Are you losing weight with this lurgy? Are you sweating a lot? Uh, I am, I am. Oh, well, that's a good sign. But it's... Difficult to pick up children. And it's time. Reasonably thick. Yeah, we'll sort that. He's reasonably thick. And we're wearing, wearing, wearing these special t shirts, which have been purchased by Mr. Attridge to celebrate. I don't know if you noticed the date, which, what happened on that day. Phil, you tell the world. Uh, we buried uh, one of the largest skid marks of post <laughs> Second World War politics. Actually. And what did it cost? 3.2 million. Right, nobody's name was mentioned. But I suppose we all know what it was. We can't be sued, can we? <laughs> yeah, probably. No, definitely that's not. not. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Probably, let's just uh, get rid and stuff. We'll right, just call it the, the skid mark. All right, well, before we get down to the meat, <laughs> the meat of the business, um, how's the summer been for everybody? Nori, you've had a wedding well, and a holiday uh, and a married festival. Off a, married off a daughter, holiday with children and a night down there. Wicker man. A busy summer, then. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it's been Alex? it's been a good month. I've just been chilling out in the sunshine. Um, most of it in England, I have to say, doing missionary work. as one does. Yeah, I suppose. Uh, Tom, you've been, been, been driving buses, or have you been away again? No, no, no. I've been doing my three you went days. To Cuba, you went to Spain. And... Since May, I've had two holidays. Um, I've been to Cuba. I've been yeah. to Spain. Um, I've just been needing another one now to, to get part time, part -time working class. Yeah. No, part -time oh no, no. I've class. been I've, I've been working away as well. Work away yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. That's hard work, isn't it? Oh, it is. Yeah. Um, Enjoyment, it's hard work. See, by the time Monday comes, I'm actually knackered. Yeah, I know, <laughs> the feeling. I know the feeling. Meanwhile, I've been out on the beaches and I also married off a son. So that was a six day wedding festival. How much to get for him? <laughs> if only, yeah. <laughs> but um, it's been exhausting, let's put it that way. And the weather's been wonderful. Right then, guys, what about politics? How's the political scene for you today? Let's start off with Alex, he's always good for a rant. <laughs> Well, I suppose the biggest rant is the hypocrisy of the Labour Party uh, attempting to besmirch Labour for independence by calling them a front for the SNP, but is anybody surprised? And as uh, Nori pointed out earlier, very risky strategy because the mainstream media didn't give Labour for independence any coverage whatsoever, so... No, they have. You, you could can, argue there's no such thing as bad, bad news. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's no, no, possibly a good point. Uh, have you been getting... Worked up about it, Phil? Not really. I mean, it's the usual rubbish from both sides, lies, deceit, fear and all the rest of it. Um, I think there's probably an element of worry in there from the Labour Party. Um, there was around a hundred odd delegates, apparently. Pat Kane, I thought, gave... Sorry? A hundred odd delegates at the conference they had. They had a conference? Week. Yeah, yeah. Through, through at the STUC at Woodlands in Glasgow. Oh, right. Um, which is where Pat Kane and they, they all went there and there was talks and everything else. Um, and it's actually, I mean, there's a clue in the name. See, an awful lot of people don't know. It, it's Labour for independence. That's not necessarily Labour Party members. I mean, there's an awful lot of people in Scotland, not so much at the last election, um, voted um, vote Labour, 25% um, at the last parliamentary, and Scottish and parliamentary. And quite clearly 20% of that, apparently, according to all the polls, would vote for independence. Yeah, and there's about 13,000 members, so they wouldn't have got very far... I think getting elected anywhere if they had to get, rely on the votes from their actual members. So it's, it's <coughs> Labour for independence. And it's also a broad sweep, a bit like Compass in I, England. I have no idea what Compass The is. mission statement's quite interesting. Which one? Labour for independence? Yeah, it could be. It, essentially, what they're saying is if you support old Labour values and independence, <coughs> you're welcome. That's about the same. But the rules state that you can't be a member of another political party and a member of Labour for Indy, apart from the Labour Party. Yeah. So if you're a non-party member, you can join them. If you're a member of the Tory party, you can't join them. Remember the SNP, you can't join them. Their executive has to be members of the Labour Party. So it's quite, it was quite interesting reading it yesterday because, you know, the whole thing, the whole idea that it's a front for the SNP is just... It's, it's the, it's the leader, or sorry, the deputy leader of Scottish Labour, whatever that is, 
in a sermon, it's an unfortunate ah, thing. <laughs> Sorry, it's an unfortunate <laughs> thing. Um, mm. His dad uh, must have been having a laugh. I think so. Um, <laughs> should have known better. He was, <coughs> was trying to stick it. Ooh, but Labour for Independence is just a nationalist front. Well, I suppose it's a nationalist front because they support a yes vote. Well, no, not necessarily. I'm, I'm not na uh, in that narrow sense. I'm, I, I would be voting yes on an international basis to uh, help to diminish the, the influence of the toxic UK with its nuclear weapons and its, you know, its, its forces running around. Well, I mean, they make policy decisions. Usually, usually tar 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 Gurkhas, by the way. Okay. One of the one of the policy decisions they made was to get rid of train. Mm. But this was at yeah. the Labour for Independence. Uh, yeah, their conference at conference. the STUC. Oh, right. um, I haven't seen a report from it or anything. I was just so busy yesterday. I was incensed because the first picture I saw was a picture of five people in front of a Labour for Indy banner, four of whom were SNP members. Mm -hmm with a headline from Better Together saying it's all front, blah, blah, blah. What they'd in fact done was cut off the information strip at the bottom. Of the original picture. Which oh, yeah. identified everybody in the photograph. Mm -hmm. from Facebook. And the actual yeah. tag was Labour for Indy campaigning with Yes for Scotland. Labour for Indy, part of the Yes for Scotland Don't campaign? I mean, no way were they trying to claim that these people were members of Labour for Indy. Now, I'd call me, Project Fear and misinformation. Well, what disappointed me most about yesterday was by the time six o'clock came, or certainly Brewer uh, later on, it was totally ignored the fact that they doctored a picture in order to create a suspicion. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, it, it was like so oh, it was difficult to find. It was on Lin, uh, Labour for Indy's Facebook page. Yeah. Yeah, with the information. It wasn't difficult to find, but the media are not interested in representing. But we know what the mainstream media are like. Everybody but it would have been a far bigger a story. Especially the state broadcast. A bit gobelesque, isn't it? You know? Well, yeah. you know, I mean, and, and as you said earlier, it was the big lie. Keep repeating it. Yeah. Yeah. And Ewan McCollum, as far as I'm concerned, I mean, I, I don't particularly have a truck with his rabid labour support but I do I used to like him as a writer now it's one of those ones we go wait a minute oh he was always bad on Twitter he well, just calmed down a bit when he started yeah, writing for the Scotsman when he, it, but writing Scotland in the Scotsman he usually you felt it was valid and the points he made were mm. balanced and valid yeah, but I'm now, how, how can I you pick up the paper and go oh you McCollum well there's not much point reading that mm. which is a pity because you know well he does rant after midnight um, and, and there's a probably good cause, good cause for that. I assume he comes in from the pub before the Probably still doesn't know that. Without, don't want to uh, disperse the man's name. Why not? Do that. He's happy enough to disper disperse everybody else. <laughs> but what about Alistair Darling's um, utterances that there's that Scotland's oil will run out in three and a half years? He gave the wrong uh, figures for the barrels. He gave, was that true? Yeah, he gave the figures of two billion. I think he should have said. 20 billion, which would have worked out about right. That's about mm. 10 times more so. Well, uh, perhaps, you should be reading, perhaps you should be reading simple things like there are 2,000 workers arriving in, Shet in Shetland at the moment for the expansion of the, fee the oil fields west of Shetland. They're having real problems finding accommodation. They've, they've converted some prison ships into floating hotels and they've arrived <laughs> up there. The local men are getting very upset because the local women are getting picked up by all these incomers. I'm sorry, the oil's about to run out. Why are they investing in such huge amounts of money then? But then you have Labour grandees, oh, the first first minister, um, Henry McLeish. No, the second first minister, Henry McLeish. Sorry, sorry, Donald, forgot about you. Um, and, you know, and now because he's come out saying that this all this fear and telling lies, and I mean, he said that you know there's obviously going to be a seven-year famine if we vote yes in Scotland. Um, and then he's getting slagged off as he is. He, is he actually going to ever come out and just say, vote yes? I think he might. Probably. Um, but see, a lot of them missed the point. That they've got this idea of being rabid nationalists. I mean, if you look south of the border, um, and it was, to my mind, it was Ian Bell that did it in an article earlier in the year when he says he has an awful lot of problems with, particularly the SNP's idea of independence. Who does? Ian Bell in uh, Herald. Oh, does he? Um, well, so do I. You know, I'm mean, sorry. Uh, oh, they kind of monarchy, you know, pound, mm -hmm. all the rest of that. Yeah, right. Um, all that. He says, but when he looks south of the border, and you know, you look at the Tories, 
um, and you see the ineptness coming from the opposition, I mean, try to tell the difference. Um, who, who stands for what? I mean, what does the Labour Party in down south stand for, apart from doing what the present government is? Um, he says I'm he has sorry, no problems I'm with sorry. that. I'm sorry, why did you bother adding down south to that? Well, let's what just say they're What does the Labour Party stand for? That covers it. Yeah. 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 And that's the big problem. For me personally, the big problem is that the Labour Party is no longer... Part well, it's of the been shown that the Scottish, that the Scottish Labour true. Party is just an adjunct of down south. It's just a region. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's just a colonial. Right. Yeah. The Governor General's mansion on the Clyde at Pacific Key is also a key part of the colonial empire. But it's all right, Mr. McNaughty is coming up to say. Oh yes, us all did, from you, did you write the article like, by who? Was it? Oh. He's, he's going to come as a foreign correspondent to Scotland. Two days a week, he's going well, to present. Again, Good morning, Scotland. Uh, Scotland Shire did a piece where they had to alter specific key, Pacific key to get his uh, Westminster bubble through the door. <laughs> but a lot of their lies are coming home to roost. I mean, a bit of, was, was that whole bit, which you've noticed now has kind of vanished, about how much it would cost to get rid of Trident, you know, and yeah. to move. It would be billions and it would take decades and all that. And it turns out, from a question asked in the Houses of Parliament in 2006, that it cost 150 million quid. Yeah. And that's but that, I mean... But to get rid of Trident. That, yeah. that, that's what surprises me. Shift it, decommission it, and all the rest With of the With the huge yeah. resources available to the British establishment, the British government and opposition, who are pro-unionist, why do they make these mistakes? Because why do they do it? Because they know, well, because... The art of propaganda They know that the is public about, is stupid it's or ignorant. It's tweaking the truth. It's not about telling lies. It's about misrepresenting the truth in oh, such no, a way that it looks true. It's life. Well, I tell, That's I, what I tell, it's about. But it's interesting. I think there's been quite a lot of speculation about the uh, Ministry of Defence's announcement that well, we might just annex firstly. <laughs> um, and, uh, you know, I've seen, seen comments uh, along the lines of, well, we're just floating it to see what happened. And uh, the real cynics, you see, writing things like, well, obviously the Conservative Party have decided to give up on Scotland because that, if anything, was going to inflame people, that would. I actually think, based on my personal experience, they don't, they don't actually get it. They don't understand it. And they, they, they say and do things because they are so detached from the attitude of so many Scots people to the whole union piece that they, they I, I've never yet met an English person who actually has the, the basic comprehension of what's going on up here and it's painfully obvious that much as I'm cynical about the UK establishment and the mainstream media uh, particularly the BBC but you expect that anyway what surprises me is the level of ignorance of, of the the press, because the press, although we don't have a particularly good press, because they tend to, to be out of the same box, they, they are capable occasionally of writing knowledgeable articles where they've studied the issue, even if they started from the premise, well, I don't understand this, I'm going to go and talk to somebody. They don't even, most of them, 99% of them don't even attempt to do that, because, because most people in England think this is the jocks getting jumping up and down because we're a bunch of miserable bastards like Andy Murray and we're just trying to... We're, I mean, I've got a particularly good friend who's... Sorry, 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 Andy Murray is no longer a jock. Uh, well, he's yeah. no longer miserable. No, I know, no, pretty well. No, he's but, English. It's because he's English, exactly, spot on. Um, <laughs> and, you know, I've got a good friend down south who said to me months ago, well, look, we all, we all know Alex Salmon doesn't want independence. We know he's just he's playing a card game here to get more powers. That's all it's about. And... I've yet to meet an English person who thinks anything other than that. I'll tell you what, if we vote yes, 50 million Englishmen are going to go, Wow. Shit. What <laughs> happened? What, uh, what? Why didn't somebody tell us this was serious? Oh, there you go. But I'll tell you what might be an awkward, because you, you've seen it in, uh, in the Lords with that idiot, oh. uh, Gideon's, Gideon's, Gideon's father-in-law. Uh, <laughs> because it's not just up here. I mean, that whole idea that oh, yeah, we need to have nuclear weapons in the Clyde, yeah. because we can't have it where there's any population. Oh. Glasgow is, what, about 15 well, miles away? Well, English population. Uh, a million, conurbation of a million. And yet, apparently, the northeast of England, you know, 
It's a desolate place. Oh, castle. oh no, by the way, but he made a mistake. There. He meant the Lake District. He didn't, he didn't, he didn't <laughs> mean the Southeast. The west. I want to mean, say everybody up That's what's unbelievable. <laughs> you know, I actually meant the Northwest. Oh, really? Oh, very good. Well, you know, have you noticed, actually, there's an organization being formed of uh, Labour Councils for uh, the North East yeah, and yeah. Cumbria to, to, to start negotiating with the Scottish Government yeah. over all kinds of mutual issues. Mm -hmm. And they've they started to take Scottish independence here yeah, they seriously. Are. Yeah. Yeah. To, to follow on part of what you said, I, I also think that the, the, the elite in Westminster hasn't grasped the fact that there's this army of cybernats who every time something goes in the paper or a figure comes out, they go, really? Actually, that's not accurate. Yeah, yeah. And they're unpaid. Yeah. They're not yeah. part of the SNP. They're you know, not organised. They just do it. Yeah. And they're and not used to that. Well, why doesn't so somebody there's nobody to yeah. attack. You can't attack Jimmy Bloggs if you don't know what party he's a member of or whatever. And if he's telling the truth and you try and attack him, all of a sudden, all the comrades come in and support them and find more information and more information. Mm -hmm. They don't understand that. They're missing that. It's why Wings is so ve vehemently hated mm -hmm. by the, the likes of Blair McDougall, etc. Yeah. Well, the cyber that's Brits. I mean, this whole yeah, they, cyber they don't do I mean, these that. people are... They don't do that. They don't the like information it. that slags SNP numbers, Scottish government numbers, comes from Better Campaign. Mm. It doesn't come from a thousand little individuals getting incensed by inaccuracies. Or lies. But we'll call them inaccuracies. Okay. You know, and that, that is a powerful thing. If we could get everybody online in Scotland... Yeah, but you can't, and that's the problem, we're preaching to the converted. That is the big issue, you know. Mm -hmm. and that's why Labour uh, can, can start this whole bit about Labour for Independence is nothing other than a front organisation with the SNP, because if they can get that in the front page of the Scotsman, the Daily Record and the BBC, as we know, was it half of Glasgow isn't online? Mm -hmm. But most Labour supporters in the west of Scotland, it would appear, I'm generalising now, so I'm going to be careful, but a huge number of them only get their news from the mainstream media. Which and is the TV and the Evening Times. Correct, and that's all they care about. So they, they're not actually that bothered, because the $64,000 question for me is, there's no doubt Stuart Campbell is educating lots of people and debunking lots of the rubbish that comes out, because his research is very, very good. But the fact is, he's, he's preaching to the converted. Okay, it's an increasing number of people who are looking on his website. What I'd love to know is how many people are actually reading his website who are in the don't know camp as opposed to in the absolute yes camp. Well, I, I really like, I don't know if you noticed, just like it was yesterday, he started doing it. Better Gather come out with a statement. Mm. And on the other side of that, he's doubled the size of it. And on the other side of it, he's got a what we don't tell you. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. yeah no, it's very yeah, good. I'm going to start producing them as t-shirts. But also, it's this, it, it's, it's this attitude that they have, and I mean, because it, it'll probably develop, you know, you, you see this because it's, all, it's just a front for the SNP, the independent. It's this whole idea that it's somehow Labour Party policy that you have to be unit. It's a referendum, which is a democratic, you know, like, like a vote. Mm -hmm. You can't tell people what to vote for. You can still be a Labour Party member in Scotland, believe in Labour Party policies. Key Hardy, having a look at, at the Westminster leadership, the, the national leadership of the Labour Party, would probably vote for independence. So he could get a Labour Party that yeah. conformed to his, you know, to his ideals when he started the Labour Party, actually, in Scotland, um, with yeah, the trade unions. Yeah, but nobody's saying that to Labour voters, because, you know... No, because they, they have the whole... They don't have... It's, they it's, must, it's let's the, be honest, yeah. most Labour voters in the West of Scotland don't have an intellectual understanding of socialism or the Labour Party. It's just a gut vote. Yeah, it's tribal. It's not voting it's, Tories. It's, tri yeah, it's, it's like, sorry, you vote, you vote Tories. Yeah, yeah it's yeah. tribal, it's pure, it's absolutely that. My daddy voted, my granny voted, and that's it, end of. Yeah. They don't follow that's the news. That's changing, so obviously don't... changing. But, yeah, if well, it's particularly uh, the last, you know. Did you see the hang your dirty washing out protest that's scheduled for George Square, which I think they've just started digging up, basically slagging off all the Glasgow Labour councillors. Hang your dirty oh, yeah, washing out. Yeah, and but then what you do is write whatever pisses you off on this. <laughs> but they get so arrogant. Gonna hang it up. All right, who's okay. organising that? They are just so it's arrogant through in Glasgow. I mean, after the things that Mathis, yeah. I mean, his own personal behaviour is fine. 
doing it in the middle of the street is something else. Uh, I mean, that whole fiddle of George Square. Uh, I mean, totally, why he is still there? How, why how, how come that man is still leader of uh, the Glasgow Because he's probably all got black books on each other. The Glasgow police said there was nothing to prosecute. Yeah. Well, because they found him in a car doing something no, naughty with another man. No, it was, no, that, that. That's just a Well, they wouldn't have prosecuted all, what's his name, the guy who was sniffing coke either. I mean, there's all sorts of things. Look, Purcell, the, the, yeah, the dogs in the street in Glasgow know that the council's been corrupt since God knows when. Uh, uh, and nobody, 70 nobody, years, nobody, maybe? Yeah, nobody does anything about it. Hey, gentlemen, look, um, we've done, believe it or not, we've bled there for 23 minutes already, which is kind of the ideal right. length for the, the average so, podcast. Yeah. Uh, for keep, keep, keep keeping people's attention. Any last? Yeah, but well, the last bit. What would you do with three point two million? And what would you do? What would you have done with the corpse? I have burnt the corpse. Yeah. Uh, three point two million. I owned a few more food banks. <laughs> <laughs> That's a stupid idea. Getting photographed at a food bank. Who hasn't been? Exactly. Who the who idiots. Been. What would you do with the three point two well, million? I'd have then? sealed it in a glass box because. Wouldn't want those atoms spreading through the world. Oh, there's just the ashes. And the 3.2 million, obviously, I would have kept. <laughs> kept them yourself. Because that would have got me membership of the Tory party. Ah, right. I would have been good, yeah. Any idea? Better what idea, Alex? What would you do then, Alex? I'm not interested in what they did with the body because I couldn't give them monkeys. Um, as far as uh, the money's concerned, I'd have. I've used it to offset the bedroom tax in Scotland. Very good. Good night. Gentlemen, thank you very much for... I didn't tell you what I was going to do. Oh, what are you going to do? I was going to... You were going to, to, you're going to go to Cuba with it. No, no, no. I was going to spend the 3.2 million on more social housing and fire her off into space with an apology to any Klingon that comes across <laughs> Very good, then. Right, thank you very much, everybody. And uh, thank you for watching and listening. <laughs> Goodbye.